independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I'd never lie to you. All right. We cannot require someone to be vaccinated. You know, I don't think we've ever had a, a situation where you mandated for the general population. The right of women to make decisions about their own bodies is not negotiable. No, definitely not. You don't want to mandate and try and force anyone to take the vaccine. We've never done that. Our interest is Americans' privacy and rights should be protected. It is a matter of privacy to know who is or who isn't. We don't want to be mandating from the federal government to the general population. It would be unenforceable and not appropriate. Putting the needs of unvaccinated people ahead of the needs of vaccinated people. One that's not the role of the federal government? No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it be mandatory. We must increase vaccinations among the unvaccinated with new vaccination requirements. Mandating a vaccine, I don't see it on a national level, merely because of encroaching upon a person's freedom to make their own choice of their own health. crazy right like so freedoms this is what we're talking about so you have people it's 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 funny because people that attack me uh and i get it from both sides by the way which i again i i wear this badge of courage uh and and hero i'm a hero <laughs> i'm just kidding people hear what they want to hear no freaking hero look this is it people on the left for whatever reason uh they look at choice in the way that they want to look at choice. So if you say, you know what, I want to take my time with this. I don't quite believe this is all this is cracked up to be. I'm looking and for, what is it, four comorbidities per death. About anywhere between 6 and 10% of people have actually died strictly from COVID. They got COVID, they got nothing else wrong with them, and they died. You go on to CDC, I think it says 6. I'm going to give you a little little room to play with there. Four comorbidities, also on the CDC's website. Four. Used to be 2.4, 2.5. It's now four. One, two, three, four. The left are looking at this, and they're thinking to themselves, selves, look at this. Look at this. These people are evil. They're bad. They're idiots. They're morons. They're monsters. They're not listening to anything anybody has to say. And 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 on the other side, the right's like, these people are sheep, and they're idiots, and they're monsters, and they're listening to everything these idiots over here have to say. And the reality is, is none of that's real. That's television, right? You get Dr. Lena Wynn here. We need to start looking at the choice to remain unvaccinated the same as we look at driving while intoxicated that you have the option to not get vaccinated if you want, but then you can't go out in public because when you go out in public, you have the potential of infecting other people with a potentially deadly disease. Just like you can choose to drink in private if you want, but if you get behind the wheel of a car and can endanger other people, there is an obligation by society to prevent you from doing that. The vaccinated should not have to pay the price. The vaccinated should not have to pay the price. Are you kidding me? Listen to that. We're going to do the same thing for the flu? When I when I tell people, look, don't you understand the fear factor that comes with some of this stuff? Don't you get that when you hear people say, well, they, they shouldn't have to pay the price. They should, whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody settle down. You're, you're, you're talking about a group of people in the unvaccinated who are now being treated as the unclean, like they should wear the scarlet letter, right? Or two letters. UV, unvaccinated. <gasps> Should they? Maybe. I don't know. So that way we know who they are. Oh, that's crazy, Chad. What do you think? I think it's insane. I do. I think we can't have a nice conversation because the conversations in this country are always dominated by the insanity. The conversation in this country is always dominated by the loudest the, the, the one who throws the biggest flamethrower, right? So they got the Molotov cocktail. And they're like, hey, let's pour some gasoline on it. Give me my flamethrower so when it hits the ground, I can fire at it and give you a hot take, which would be great. But it's not going to advance anything. 
I'm a huge believer in the vaccine. Now, do I think it's the end all to be all? No. And I don't think we should call it the vaccine. The reality is it is a shot. It is a preventative. It is a no different than the flu shot at this point in time. Flu is endemic. It's not going anywhere. This is endemic. You take the shot once a year. This one will probably get to the point where you take it once a year. And as you already seen with Moderna, they got the combo coming soon. So you'll be able to get your flu shot and your COVID shot. You'll get a Flovid shot. You move on with your life. As we look at remdesivir and several other things that are out there that this thing's going to have remedies for as far as being able to help you the minute you get sick, you get, you know, you go and you automatically start taking this stuff like you would with a pack or any of the other things that are available to us for other ailments that we have. And then you get on with your life. The minute we start getting to the point where we can have real conversations about how we move forward without looking at each other as the enemy, it'll be great. But it ain't going to happen anytime soon. Because there's no money in calm. There's no money in peace. There's no money in conversation. There's money in arguing and fighting over a problem. And that is a frustrating thing for all of us. It is. Freedoms. Are they taking away your freedoms? Eh. No. Chris Wallace, Nebraska Governor Pete Rickett, talking about, you know, health care and choices. Now, the governor of Nebraska, Pete Ricketts. I want to start with something that you said this week about President Biden's new vaccine mandates. Here you are, sir. President's forgotten we live in America. He thinks we live in the Soviet Union. And the hypocrisy of this is just unbelievable. What's so objectionable about Biden's vaccine mandates? First of all, we have been encouraging people to get vaccinated because vaccines work and they will help people. But it should be a personal health care choice. This is not something that the government should mandate. No. Are they really mandating it? <sighs> not really. The way you would think. They're mandating businesses to make that move. They're mandating businesses to be the bad guys, which, and by the way, a marketplace right now where people are struggling to find workers, if you start losing workers, businesses aren't going to be happy about that. I don't care what anybody says. I have my, my on-air partner here in Phoenix, he's like, oh, I think businesses will love this. Do you? Do you really think they're going to love this? Oh, absolutely. Tell me why. Well, then those people can quit. Yeah, but you can't find employees right now so losing employees isn't going to show people things. Losing employees isn't going to go, huh, they got it going on. Can't have a conversation. Can't have a conversation. You can't, Dr. Fauci. Well, I think the president is, is, is you know, being somewhat moderate in his demand, if you want to call it that, in that there are some people who really don't want to get vaccinated, but they don't want to lose their job. You've got to give them an off lane. And the off lane is if you get tested frequently enough and find out you're positive, you won't come to work and you won't infect other people. So it really is somewhat of a compromise there. Myself, I would make it just vaccinate or not. But he was trying to be moderate in what his pronouncement was. Mm. Yeah, but you've been useless this entire time, Fauci. No offense. We're going to talk about you in a little bit because the more that comes out about all the stuff that's being found out about you and what did you know or didn't you know about Wuhan makes you ask serious questions about the fact that you were lying that you were lying, that the National Institute of Health did actually put money in there. They did know what's going on. How about this? If this never starts, we're in a good situation. Mandating things, that's going to be tough. It is. Because you're going to get pushback. Big time. By the way, you're going to get pushback from people like me who want people to be able to, 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 to make choices. For themselves. Again, I believe in the shot, uh, but I believe more in the freedom of human beings. I believe in the shot, and I think it'll help and it'll mitigate a lot of the things that are going on out there. There's no doubt the unvaccinated are, are in certain places, a absolute crush on hospitals. There's no doubt about that. The end of the day, I'm also a bigger believer in, in freedom. I'm a bigger believer in in giving people choice. People will say to me, well, Chad, do you believe that people should have choice when it comes to uh, pregnancy? I've said it all along. Not something I'd want to choose, but I'm not in that situation. I'm not. You know it. I know it because I'm a dude. I'm a guy. Contrary to popular belief, 
guys can't have babies. <laughs> Probably going to get in trouble there for that. I'm okay with that. All that being said, I believe people have choice. And they should have choice. Right? You should be able to protect yourself. If you believe this much in the shot, then you wearing a mask when you're outside and you getting both vaccines should make you feel that you're pretty safe, that whatever happens to you, you'll be fine. I believe in freedoms. Always will. Always will. I think we should all believe more in freedoms. We should all respect each other a little bit more. And I'm not even saying be a little kind. Just a little bit more common sense. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Hope all is well with you. Raycon, best year buds around. Love my Raycons. Continue to use my Raycons every single day. This weekend, did a lot of video stuff, did a lot of editing, had my Raycons on. It was awesome. I didn't have to worry about anything. I was enjoying myself tremendously. By what? Putting my Raycons on, going to work, lots of noise just going on. You know what? Wouldn't know. Why? Had my Raycons on. Loving every second of it. No stems, no wires, no no pain in my ears all weekend long, even though I've got my, my Raycons ears in. So they give you, you get the like the case, right? The case is pretty awesome. You open it up, man, there they are, fully charged, ready to go. You get four full charges when your case is charged. So that way you're not tethered anywhere. You get six soft gel tips. Find the one that fits your ear correctly. Just grab them, throw them on. Find the one that makes your ear and it almost become one and then go. 45 day happiness guarantee they start under 70 bucks get your raycons now simple and easy buy raycon.com slash chad when you go there you save 15 percent buy raycon.com slash chad buy raycon.com slash chad chad benson show you go boy this isn't about right or left this is just right and wrong right you are chad benson show Ah, the NFL is back in earnest. Monday night football game tonight. Very excited about it. I had arguably the laziest weekend. It was great. Let me tell you guys something. So watch football Saturday. My wife had a bunch of stuff going on, and I stayed home, hung out. I had some work to do. Just relax. I was going to play some golf. It's like 110. I thought, you know what, I'm going to skip it. Uh, yesterday, though, I told her, I said, look, I'm watching football all day. She goes, totally fine. She went off to church. I watched football. Uh, did my church online, as I always, you know, during certain parts of the year, I will do. 10.06 a.m., which would be 106 Phil's time. Welp, there's always next season, referring to the Washington Football Club. Thank you very much, Phil. <laughs> It was awesome. I watched games all day, and I have the NFL package. Uh, but the thing is, and and I will tell you this, much like on Saturday, much like yesterday, the crowd. It's just something about having that crowd there. And I don't think people realize that. Because if you watch it at home and you could only see the players, eh, it's one thing. But when you could see everything, and you can have a sense that no matter what they're piping in on TV, it does not replace the crowd. It does not replace the 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 just the feeling of and the atmosphere of everybody. And it was awesome. It was incredible. Watched uh, several games yesterday. You know, back and forth. Steelers game was great. Washington, I thought, put up a hell of a fight against the uh, you know against the Chargers, but. Got to absolutely look over and say, holy moly, what a game Kansas City and the Browns played. And that crowd was insane. It was just nuts. And then I watched in the afternoon, I was flipping back and forth, and to watch the way that Aaron Rodgers played yesterday, you would think to yourself, could somebody care less about playing on a team he was like, yeah, you know, we didn't play well. None of us did. It's just one game, you know. Just my wife's like, I'm like, you know what? He is very, 
He's very much that way. He's always kind of that way. He's kind of prickly. Uh, nothing about him is very friendly. And he just looks so disinterested in playing sports yesterday. <laughs> I'm like, there's still an opening for Jeopardy. It was great. It was great. And then, you know, Saturday I watched uh, I watched the whole Oregon-Ohio State game, and I got to just say something. Oregon looks great, but having 100,000 people there, same thing. Michigan game at night, having 100,000 people in the big house. You could feel it. You could sense it. It was great. And all I kept thinking is, ah, Monday you're going to get all kinds of crap about people going, well, well, it's a super spreader event. It's a super spreader event. Only two NFL teams have – vaccination requirements i know the raiders do I forgot who the other team is it might be baltimore actually who's also playing the raiders tonight but those are full vaccine requirements to get into the stadium and then last night i watched the rams game and can i just say four and a half billion dollars get you in a stadium is incredible that thing is i don't even know what to describe it it's it's just the most insane stadium sofi stadium that what they call the infinity screen that goes all the way around. So if you're down in the bottom level, you can look up and you can see inside of the screen, the, like the replays and everything. And if you're at the top level, you can stare straight at it. So it's got two different sides to it. Just, just nuts. So much fun. So much fun. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, 24, 23 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us. And every game I watched, Announcers said it over and over again. God, it's good to have fans back. It is a sense of of normality, a sense of of us getting back to normal, even though we're hearing, oh, my God, the pandemic, pandemic. There was just a sense of, look, this is what's happening. It's endemic, not pandemic. How do we live with it, through it, around it, and above it? You get on with your life. Use common sense. Pretty simple. Kind of like life should be. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I'd never lie to you. We cannot require someone to be vaccinated. You know, I don't think we've ever had a, a situation where you mandated for the general population. The right of women to make decisions about their own bodies is not negotiable. No, definitely not. You don't want to mandate and try and force anyone to take the vaccine. We've never done that. Our interest is Americans' privacy and rights should be protected. It is a matter of privacy to know who is or who isn't. We don't want to be mandating from the federal government to the general population. It would be unenforceable and not appropriate. Putting the needs of unvaccinated people ahead of the needs of vaccinated people. One that's not the role of the federal government? No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it be mandatory. We must increase vaccinations among the unvaccinated with new vaccination requirements. Mandating a vaccine, I don't see it on a national level, merely because of encroaching upon a person's freedom to make their own choice of their own health. Ah, the battle that is. To vaccine or not to vaccine? That is question. So last week, we obviously know what Biden did. We're trying to get out of this thing. Somebody asked me, do you think I'm, we're out of this? I said, yeah, I think we're out of this. I think we're, what we're not out of is the fighting. But look how many people. Go and look how many people. Absolutely. How many people die? What is it? 40 every 40 seconds, somebody dies of a stroke. Every 30 seconds, somebody dies of heart-related illness. Right, so they've got heart disease and stuff. We're not stopping everything for that, but you can't catch that. No, you can't. But what you can do is do everything you can before that to prevent it. Right, you eat better. Right, sleep a little bit more, a little bit less stress, work out a little bit more. It's a lifetime thing, but that lifetime thing will also go and make sure that 
much of whatever else happens to you, even if you get the COVID virus, that things will be better. We need to live our lives as if. if, if think about this for a second. I want everybody to just soak this up. Just think about this. If, if this wasn't front page 24 7, would anybody really pay that much attention to it? Would you go to change everything in your life the way it is? Probably not. Doesn't mean we don't pay attention to it. We respect it. Absolutely. My business here that I'm at, they ask me to wear a mask. I wear a mask. It's fine. I, I have no problem with that. They've asked me to wear a mask. I've gotten vaccinated. And by the way, I've also always done their part. It's all I can do. People always find it weird that I don't care that somebody else doesn't get the vaccine. Why should I care? They've made a choice. Why is it any of my business? Well, they could make you sick. They could. But if I've done everything I'm supposed to do that you think will protect and I think will protect, then what else can I do? I believe, and again, I, I, I think the word shot is, 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 is a better word to use than vaccine. We don't get the flu vaccine. But how many times do you go, again, flu shot, flu shot, flu shot. Same thing for this. It's a shot. Did you get the COVID shot? Fantastic. Well, the flu vid shot later on this year with the flu shot and Moderna's COVID shot all in one. We've got to start living our lives. We do. Lawsuits are coming. You and I both know that. So be prepared for a ton of those. And whether or not this mandate is everything that people think it's going to be. And the big thing is, is as Dan Abrams puts it, Who's going to challenge? How serious could those be? The federal government is on safe ground when it comes to mandating that government workers get vaccinated or hospital workers because anyone who's getting federal funds, they've got more control over. But it's the mandate of the larger companies where I think that there could be serious challenges here. Yeah, serious challenges. By the way, Congress exempt from this. What? The United States Postal Service exempt from this. What? Federal courts exempt for this. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. It always goes back to do as I say, not as I do. And that's what frustrates people. The best challenges are not going to come from the governors who are making all the noise. It's going to come from employers who are saying, for whatever reason, we don't want to implement this. Yeah. Partly because I think employers are going to look around and say, I'm having a tough time trying to find employees as is. I'm having a tough time. Now, the mandate. Isn't the mandate we, you know, they're not forcing you to get the shot. You could get a test once a week, I think is what they're asking. Okay. I think most people will be okay with that. And if you're sick, you stay at home. That's, That's fine. Why shouldn't we test everybody at that point? Well, because other people have the vaccine. So you're worried that you who have the vaccine, but can be very much a carrier and asymptomatic, but you're worried that those people might get it from somebody who doesn't have the vaccine. On the other side of things, you're not worried if an asymptomatic person who's got the shot gives it to somebody who doesn't have the vaccine. Ah, that makes sense. Except for the part where it makes sense. Just saying. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show's Twitter tweet at us. You know, over the weekend, I watched... Uh, a lot of stuff with 9-11, you know, going back, where were we? We, we? we talked about that on Friday. And it was interesting. There's a great article talking about, you know, not even 9-11 today. So a 9-11 magnitude attack could bring us together. And I'm like, I don't think so. I really don't. I don't think so. The day after 9-11, we, we embraced each other. There was no red and blue. We weren't, as, we weren't in a situation that we're in now where we're polarized to the point of ridiculousness. None of that stuff was, was there. But I will tell you what. I posted something about 9-11, and I got a few people that shot back at me. And it makes me laugh because you just sit there, and I will tell you this. If 9-11 happened today, I can almost guarantee... There would be people here in America 
that would cheer it on that are Americans. No way. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. You've got professors that have, you know, come out in the last couple of weeks and, you know, shown essentially, look, this is what we really think of, of America. So you have a professor named, uh, she's an abolitionist professor, 9-11. She says, was a heteropatriarchal capitalistic attack that benefit white people. What? Yeah. Yeah. So she essentially said, this is the first time Americans have ever felt fear. That's what Jay Johnson on MSNBC said. And she goes, white Americans have not really felt true but fear before 9-11. They never felt what it was like and meant to be acceptable, vulnerable, and on the receiving side of military violence at home. But white Americans' experiences are not a stand-in for America. Plenty of us know what it's like to experience fear, and we knew before 9-11. And you sit there, and I'm like, man, there's just... There's so much of that. Everybody's looking for victimhood. Everybody's looking for something. And they would celebrate the downfall of us. They would celebrate all of this stuff. They would celebrate the, the, this. You know, it's our fault. We're, we're getting what we deserve. As if the alternative for them is better. Right? As if the alternative for them is absolutely better. Or any of us. No, it's not. You know that and I know that. Bill Maher, over the weekend, had George Will on, who, again, conservative, uh, talking about a lot of stuff. But one of the things he talks about is the, the, the word that we're heading in this country is so segregated because everybody needs a label. I saw on the football game, Alicia Keys sang Lift Every Voice and Sing, which now I hear is called the Black National Anthem. Now, maybe we should get rid of our national anthem. I think when you go down a road where you're having two different national anthems, but I think we should have one national anthem. I agree 110 percent. America the beautiful, something I've always thought of. I think it'd be great. But this insanity of wanting everything to be segregated because that makes it equal. And and that it, it, it's nuts. It truly is. Nine, another 9-11 like attack would not bring us together. In fact, I think it might splinter us more. Colleges sometimes now have many of them have different graduation ceremonies for black and white separate dorms. This is what I mean. Segregation. You've inverted the idea. We're going back to that under a different name. Where are race relations worst? Probably on campuses where they obsess about race excessively. Multi-billion dollar diversity inclusion industry now exists in this country to convince people that things are bad and getting worse. Actually, they're getting better. Yeah, they are. Absolutely they are. They're getting so much better. We wouldn't know that, though, according to the news. We wouldn't know that according to a lot of things out there. Why? Because it's, it's not. According to who? 22-year-old? 23-year-old? on campus, who's being told that their entire life has completely, uh, essentially been decided for them by the white man, right? Or or that they're a victim because of, uh, of the color of their skin? Depending on the color of the skin, right? I mean, all of this stuff is nuts. And yes, that whole segregation thing is insane because you're seeing it more and more. But George Will said what we've been saying for a long time. It's business, people. It's all it is. It's a business. We found a new business, and the new business is victimhood. The new business is how much can I make off of you by telling you you're a victim and then telling you you're the person who's perpetrating crimes and evil against that person, and I'm going to sell you something so you can both understand how to fix it. And by fix it, I mean continue to push it forward, not actually solve anything. That's the reality of it. Turn on the <laughs> SEC football game and you will see Georgia, Alabama, and the head referee is an African-American. He's bossing everyone around. They weren't allowed to play in the SEC until 60 years ago. Now, the daily interactions of normal Americans who are not obsessing about whether the United States was founded on race in 1619. They're not obsessing about critical race theory. They're getting on with their lives and race relations in the vast majority of Americans interactions have never been better yeah but you would know that because there is nothing in it 
that makes somebody a victim and then makes somebody the perpetrator of bad things towards that person that somebody can profit off of. I It drives me crazy when I listen to a lot of this crap. And you can't just sit back there and say, man, we're the most diverse nation on earth and it's never enough. We've come so far and it's never enough. Everything is always bad. The, the, the sky is always falling. And everybody is either a really bad person or is a loser because of that bad person. And that's a bunch of crap. 323 538 at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Okay. Guys, let's just be honest, right? You know, if good for a second. Doesn't always work the way we want. It doesn't. You know it, and I know it. So, so what I want you to do. GetRoman.com slash Chad. Talk to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. You want to be ready? When you're ready. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? ED. Hey, with Roman, you get free online evaluation, ongoing erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. Roman ready equals confidence, meaning when the time is right, you're ready to go and you can rise to the occasion. U.S. licensed healthcare professional, do everything online, right? So you can find the best treatment plan. So if medication is appropriate, it ships you free within two days. Whole process is discreet, convenient, straightforward, and easy, and you don't have to worry about leaving your home. Do everything online at GetRoman.com slash Chad. GetRoman.com slash Chad. Go there today. If you're prescribed, 50% off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you have the confidence and control this summer. Make sure you're Roman ready. GetRoman.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. Is that what you wanted? They'll take it. Marvel Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings repeats in the box office top spot in week two of release, earning another $35.8 million. That puts its total domestic take at $145.6 million so far, making it the fourth highest grossing film of the year, with time remaining to claim the top spot from Black Widow. I'm seeing winners. A third place bow for the horror flick Malignant, the only other film opening in wide release over the weekend. About $5.6 million there. Yep, more and more, and you're seeing it in the film world, more and more of the big studios are now saying, you know what, we're not going to do both. We're not going to release both at the same time. We're going to do it and give a runway up to to streaming. And I, I'm i like, that's totally fine. Again, there's movies I want to see in in the theater and movies I'm fine with seeing at home. I, I talked about it last week, and I continue to say this. If I'm a theater company, I'm looking at ways of enhancing the experience, but also giving people and trying to coax people into getting people in there for movies maybe they wouldn't want to go see for 15 bucks or 20 bucks, but they may see for five. They may see for... And that's why you got to work within the parameters. You call and and you get on the horn with all these movie companies saying, look, get them released in here. We're fine with that. Take all of the rip for, you know, your five or ten bucks, whatever you're going to charge. Have surge pricing. Like you have, like there's days where it's, right, like I think Tuesdays in most places, it's, you know, half off. Do that for movies that maybe aren't going to get the big boom. You're like, that movie looks good, but I don't know if it's 15 bucks, 16 bucks good. I don't know if it's, you know, L.A., New York, I don't know if it's 20 bucks good, but it's, you know, looks like I'd pay 750 to see it. You got to figure stuff out. You do. And, and streaming's not going anywhere. Streaming is here to stay. And you just better figure out how you go about trying to merge the two. Before you fall so far behind. Remember, the, I, I remember the days when the papers, first of all, radio said, ah, you know, don't worry about TV. Then TV said, oh, you know what? You got nothing to worry about when it comes to to, to the movie industry and, and, to, and to, to the, you know, 
going about about the internet and then you know lo and behold everything has changed so you better figure out how to adapt 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter tweet at us text the program people in school in new york city it's been three million days or something like that people are excited it is a big day across the city. The commute begins once again this morning for hundreds of thousands of city workers that have not been back in the office in 18 months. Also today, the grace period is now over for businesses required to ask for proof of vaccination. They will be fined if they are caught in violation. Yep. So New York City workers back. Schools are back. We're excited about, you know, our entire faculty getting vaccinated and wrapping a protective bubble of safety around our students. And when I continue to encourage our families to get our students vaccinated. 18 months. My goodness, me, Crazy. It's time to live our lives, people. Chad Benson Show. Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I'd never lie to you. We cannot require someone to be vaccinated. You know, I don't think we've ever had a a situation where you mandated for the general population. The right of women to make decisions about their own body is not negotiable. No, definitely not. You don't want to mandate and try and force anyone to take a vaccine. We've never done that. Our interest is Americans' privacy and rights should be protected. It is a matter of privacy to know who is or who isn't. We don't want to be mandating from the federal government to the general population. It would be unenforceable and not appropriate. Putting the needs of unvaccinated people ahead of the needs of vaccinated people. One that's not the role of the federal government? No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it be mandatory. We must increase vaccinations among the unvaccinated with new vaccination requirements. Mandating a vaccine, I don't see it on a national level, merely because of encroaching upon a person's freedom to make their own choice of their own health. There we go. What will happen? Freedom versus no freedom. 80 million workers are not vaccinated. 17 million healthcare workers uh, who do who operate in institutions which uh, work with Medicare and Medicaid will now be required uh, to, to get vaccines. Uh, we also know that the workplace requirements he put in place for workplaces that have 100 plus uh, you know, workers, that those will affect about 80 million uh, Americans. Really? Except for a few. You're in Congress? Yeah, right. United States Postal Service? Yeah, right. Federal courts? Yeah, right. You get an exemption. That's what you get. You get an exemption. You get a like, you know what? Don't worry about anything. Right? You ain't got nothing to worry about. Oh. Dan Abrams, our good buddy, who we loved, right? Yeah. Our favorite show, Live PD, no longer on because apparently it's evil and bad. I still, I I don't even know what to say at that point in time. But welcome to the world of insanity. But he is a lawyer. That's his gig. Top of being all the other things. Talks about who's going to really take this thing on. The best challenges are not going to come from the governors who are making all the noise. It's going to come from employers who are saying, for whatever reason, we don't want to implement this. Yeah. I could see that. Here's the other side of things. Something I think we should all think about. It's like, so let's just say eh, people decide that they want to, you know, they're for this, against us, whatever it is. A business is is going to get on board or say they are. How does it work? We've seen one of the big things that happened during the pandemic early on is when they started closing things down, they started doing certain things. The reality is, is the enforcement side of it, it's only as good as the enforcement. I don't care what it is. Look it up in Seattle, look up in Portland, look up in Los Angeles, San Francisco, parts of New York, where it's, 
you know, you're not enforcing any of the laws when it comes to like even petty crime or any kind. Then, then what's the use of having it on the books? And when this thing first started, so many restaurants and so many things continued to kind of operate. And while they said you couldn't do those things, the reality was is. Uh, enforcement's a bigger deal than I think people realize. Typically, the way this would work is you would get companies to say, we're going to say in writing, we definitely are adhering to this requirement. Then what? Then how do you enforce it at that point? I think from the government's perspective, they're hopeful that companies will simply comply. So that's what you're hoping for. Yeah. A lot of it is going to be, yeah, 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 we're totally with you guys on 110%. We're like, we're totally with you. Like 110. We're, we're on board. 100% on board. Are you going to enforce this? Are you going to fire everybody who's not? Who's not? No. <laughs> but I'm just telling them we're on board. What are they going to do? Come look at all of us? Probably not. Lawsuits abound. This thing's going to wind through the courts. I don't know why we even have press conferences that have politicians. The nine people in the robes will have the final say. And we can go from there. And right now, you look at it. Worst case scenario, if you're a conservative and you're looking, it's five to four. Best case scenario, it's six to three. Either way, it's a W as far as people are are concerned with. When it comes to the courts in this, we'll see what takes place. All that being said, you've got kids returning to school today. And... What about the vaccine? When are the kids going to get the vaccine? And it's not a vaccine, it's a shot. The FDA announcing it won't cut corners when it comes to evaluating the use of COVID vaccinations for children, cautioning parents not to seek out vaccinations ahead of FDA approval, saying in part, children are not small adults. Yeah. They're not small adults. They're just small people, but they're not small adults. People could be asking me, are you going to give Jack the vaccine? He's already had it. All the kids have had it. I'm not worried about it. Not the vaccine. They've had it. So, were you scared when he got it? No, because I didn't know he had it. <laughs> You're a bad parent. I'm not. He says, Dad, my stomach hurts. I said, well, I said, dude, you've been eating Takis for like two days, right? You probably are constipated. But maybe you should just rest. Didn't have a fever or anything. That was the only thing he had. By the time I went and played golf and came back, he was outside playing hockey in 105-degree weather. Fully kitted up, too, by the way. My son does not. My son loves the part. My son is very much a method actor in life. So if he's playing hockey in, in in front of the house, right? So he's on the smooth driveway. He's got his, his roller hockey puck. He's got the full he's got the full kit and caboodle on. He's going full, full, full Monty. He's scoring goals. He's winning a cup. He's high five and everything. It's it's the full kit and caboodle. He's practicing jumping over the boards. That's all he had. <laughs> so that was that was it. Everybody else, I just thought it was allergies. That's the way I mean, you know, it is that's so I don't know if I'm going to allow or want him to get it. Neither does his mom. By the way, his mother is very much progressive, leans to the left. I don't know if she's going to want him to get it either. So we're going to, you know, take a step back. And, you know, for us as adults, I make choices for me. Consult my family, but I look and and, and I want to know a little bit more. I'm big enough to handle what comes with whatever the vaccines were. Right, I'm big enough for that. For kids, the resilient, absolutely. If this thing was killing kids left, right, and center, I, there'd be no doubt. I think we would all run and say we got to get the shot. But what if kids get sick? Kids get sick all the time. Are we going to mandatory? Are we going to make it mandatory they get the flu shot? Because that's the one that really gets them sick. And think about this: we compare the flu to this, and 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 because that's about as close as you're going to get at this moment in time. But think about this. The flu has a season. And look at the damage it does to kids. Over 18 months, heading into 19 months, it's, if you were to have the flu go 19 straight months, see kind of the stuff that could potentially happen with kids. But because it ebbs and flows and has seasons, we don't talk about it in the same way. 
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Infrastructure, we're going to touch on a little bit more. Will it happen? Won't it happen? What's going to happen? That's a big question. The amount of money that they want to spend is insane. Can we just say, you're talking three and a half trillion. By the way, this is three and a half trillion dollars. We're not talking about the infrastructure bills we would think. So we think infrastructure, we think, you know, roads, buildings, bridges, you know, all of those, you know, airports, those kind of like the, you know, putting in, you know, uh, wireless Internet and putting in high speed Internet and and true infrastructure, the human infrastructure filibuster behind the back. Hey, you know what? Reconciliation will screw the filibuster. We'll get around the backside. It, it's not going to happen. And one of the reasons is Joe Manchin and Joe's not really into this. It's in the House right now. We could pass that one, and we can still go on to reconciliation. We can debate it. We can discuss it. We can have hearings on it. Make sure whatever we do, we do it and do it right and don't put more out there that's not needed or basically put ourselves further in debt. Sounds more like a conservative than a Democrat because in many ways that's kind of what he is. He walks a fine line in his, in his state. He's in West Virginia, right? So predominantly red state, but he is managed in the blue side of the aisle to hold on to power and continue to do so. And I, he is, him, I, I, I said from when Trump lost, he did, to uh, what happened in Atlanta. I mean, you know, really that's what it was, but in Georgia with the senators. And you, you see what took place out here. You have two senators that are arguably as powerful as anybody else outside of the president. And that is Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. Both are for keeping the filibuster. Both are pretty outspoken about the amount of money that they want to spend. And it is, I, I like the fact that they're standing up and saying, no, 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 no. No. Why can't we have a conversation? Right? That's, why can't we have a discussion? It's in the House, right? That's it. We ought to see what kind of money that spins off and then basically match that up with the highest priorities and needs we have. That's all I've asked for. And we haven't had that. We haven't had that honest debate. No. And you're not going to because the left knows if you see the stuff that's out there and it's easy to say, let's just tax all the rich people. But it's going to hit everybody talking about raising taxes on the corporations again. By the way, majority of Americans don't feel at this point in time raising taxes is probably the smartest thing to do. At this point in time. But of course, if you're telling, hey, yeah, we're just going to go over there. We're just going to raise you know, taxes on those people. We, okay, cool. It's not me, so what do I care? Frustrating. We can't have this conversation. Do we really need all this? Three and a half trillion dollars. What do we do with all the other trillions? How do we spend that? How do we spend those billions? Are we spending them wisely? No. Not in many cases. From the insanity of social services, things that don't work, to the amount of money we pour into the military and everything else for many things that we don't need. Yeah, I think there's a fair question to ask before we go out and roll out three and a half trillion more dollars, put us more in debt. And we're not even having a conversation about inflation, which we should be having. But why would we want to do that? Spoil the spending of other people's money? Ha! Ah! 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Give it to my dog, Doodle. Give it to my dog, Bowie and Red. And happy, healthy, amazing. Their coats are incredible. I gave it to my friend, Jess. She works here. She she works sometimes with me, and she I mentored her for a while, kind of like an intern. She'd come in, and she'd work, and now she's working here. She says to me last week, and since I've known her, she's always said to me, you know, her boyfriend or have this dog and say, they've always had issues. with her. She says, does it really work? I said, yes. She, I gave her a small bag of it. She took it home. Hadn't seen her. I took some time off vacation, came back. She says, I cannot believe how amazing that stuff is. She goes, his allergies are virtually gone. It is a supplement. It's called canine Vita smart. Spring on the top of your dog's food, vitamins, minerals, vegetables, probiotics, all these amazing things. Omega three, six, nine. It brings your dog's food to life. And it is incredible. 
Try it before you buy it with Rough Greens. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. You want to see a different in your dog's coat? You want to see a different in your dog's joint pain and, and arthritis? You want to see a healthier, happier dog? Give them Rough Greens. You cover the cost of shipping. It's like 8 bucks. They're going to send you a bag for free. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. RoughGreens.com slash Chad. Or call 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a look and see what trended through the weekend. It was so very exciting, of course, of course, of course. Head on over first and foremost to Twitter, where people are angry at each other all the time. All the time. Veronica Wolinski, an outspoken anti-vaxxer, anti-masker advocate, has died after spending weeks in the hospital, according to Newsweek. Of course, people are, are loving that. Because that's who we are nowadays. (laughs) Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett says justice must be hyper vigilant about personal biases. Fearing the court would be seen as partisan. Duh. Of course. Duh. House Democrats. Coalescing around the draft proposal that could raise as much as $2.9 trillion to pay for most of Biden's expansion in the social safety net. By doing what? Increasing taxes on corporations and individuals who make a ton of money. We'll see how that plays out. Head on over to Google. See what's been trending. Obviously, uh, <clears throat> football, NFL yesterday, huge, 2 million-plus searches. Then you go, Chicago Bears. Why didn't Justin Fields play? He played a little bit last night. Why didn't he play? People are asking the question. NFL scores trending everywhere. The Cleveland Browns, the Packers, the Patriots, you name it. All of the top things. It's the world we live in now. For those of you who don't understand how still powerful the NFL is. The top 10 trending things. Eagles, Broncos, Steelers, Patriots, Packers, Rams, Scores, Bears, NFL, NFL Week 1. All trending right there. Trevor Lawrence, 12. Seahawks, 11. VMAs, 10. I didn't even know they were on. (laughs) Washington football team. Arizona Cardinals. What a game they played. Oh, my Lord, what a game they played. And Cardell Jones, can we just say have a season? He had five sacks. That's like scoring five goals. (laughs) It was awesome. Of course, the youngsters played yesterday. Trevor Lawrence, Thor, prettiest guy in football. He did not... uh, Farewell, he got a rude awakening. Him and Urban Meyer, they dropped one. He had three interceptions, three touchdowns. He looked great, and then other times he looked like a rookie. Welcome to the world of the NFL. The game is fast. It is quick. It is not the same. The, every time you play in college, a guy like him, there'll be one or two other guys on the field that are, you know are playing at the next level. This is the next level. So the worst guy on that field, more often than not, would have been the best guy on other teams. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. All right. We cannot require someone to be vaccinated. You know, I don't think we've ever had a, a situation where you mandated for the general 
population. The right of women to make decisions about their own body is not negotiable. No, definitely not. You don't want to mandate and try and force anyone to take the vaccine. We've never done that. Our interest is Americans' privacy and rights should be protected. It is a matter of privacy to know who is or who isn't. We don't want to be mandating from the federal government to the general population. It would be unenforceable and not appropriate. Putting the needs of unvaccinated people ahead of the needs of vaccinated people. One that's not the role of the federal government? No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it be mandatory. We must increase vaccinations among the unvaccinated with new vaccination requirements. Mandating a vaccine, I don't see it on a national level, merely because of encroaching upon a person's freedom to make their own choice of their own health. Ah, to mandate or not to mandate is thine question. The battle will be real. You know that. I know that. Last week, Biden. The Department of Labor is developing an emergency rule to require all employers with 100 or more employees that together employ over 80 million workers to ensure their workforces are fully vaccinated or show a negative test at least once a week. Some of the biggest companies are already requiring this. United Airlines, Disney, Tyson's Food, and even Fox News. The bottom line, we're going to protect vaccinated workers from unvaccinated co-workers. So we're going to protect unvaccinated from the vaccinated. Out of curiosity. And this is just me throwing out stuff. little devil's advocate, if you will. Just out of curiosity. So you're vaccinated and you're scared of somebody who's not vaccinated? I'm, again, I'm just, I'm trying to figure it out. If you think about this for a second. So you tell somebody you need to get vaccinated because you could spread this thing. Yeah, well, because of, you know, you could also spread it. Maybe not as freely as somebody who's unvaccinated, but you could spread it as well. Okay, okay. But you have protection against it because you're vaccinated. That is correct. But you're worried about... I... Does anybody else find this thing absurd? Look, and it's not quite the mandate, I think, that some people think it is. It is mandated that you either vaccinated or you get tested. Well, I think the president is, 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 you know, being some really don't want to get vaccinated, but they don't want to lose their job. You've got to give them an off lane. And the off lane is if you get tested frequently enough and find out you're positive, you won't come to work and you won't infect other people. So it really is somewhat of a compromise there. Myself, I would make it just vaccinate or not. But he was trying to be moderate in what his pronouncement was. Mm. Vaccinated or not. Vaccinated or not. Trying to make it moderate. So everybody's getting vaccinated? Well, I mean, by everybody, we mean, like, Congress has an exemption. Postal Service has an exemption. Federal courts have an exemption. But outside of that, yeah, mostly pretty much everybody. Do as I say, not as I do. Welcome to the world where people get frustrated. I will tell you this. I am pro-shot. Absolutely. Especially if you have underlying health conditions, you're a fool not to get a flu shot, not to get a shot when it comes to 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 this. You're you're you no, you have to. You'd be foolish not to. This is no joke. This is real. What did we talk about last week? This thing, but you should respect the possibility that if you got this thing, it could do serious harm to you. And the long term effect is I don't know what it is. I think for some people, the long term effect may not be great study done last uh week they released a study that they've done and they're going to look more in depth into it in the coming months that the long-term covid people have had some changes potentially in their brain which is causing them to to struggle with memory and certain things like that we don't know what the long term we also don't know what could happen long term with these vaccines i don't think anything's going to come of it the way that we should be reveling in in the fact that we got these things out as fast as we did and that, that the world was able to push this thing through, in particular here in the United States of America. But all that being said, 
I am pro shot, not vaccine, because the vaccine, you know, we think of polio, right? We think of, you know, diphtheria. <laughs> oh my God, diphtheria. Yes, of course. I am pro those things. Absolutely. I am pro getting vaccine, getting the shot here. I am far more pro freedom of choice. I'm far more pro freedom. And it's unfortunate that we live in a situation now where we're battling over something and we've turned it into the the ultimate in politics. I think the um, downside of this mandate in terms of hardening positions and taking something that was subtly political and making it overtly political could outweigh any of the benefits that we hope to achieve. If you look at where we are right now, right now 75% of adults over the age of 18 have had at least one dose of the vaccine. Most of them will complete the series. That's a very high number of people vaccinated. We're not going to get above 90%. We don't even really reach 90% with childhood immunizations, which are mandated. So we're going to get somewhere between 80 and 90%. Perhaps with a mandate on small businesses, eventually you get to something akin to 85 percent but it's going to be slow because this is going to get litigated it takes osha time to implement regulations you'll have to put in place guidance give businesses a grace period and then figure out what the enforcement mechanism is going to be and the enforcement mechanism is huge we heard earlier uh our buddy uh dan abrams talk about enforcement enforcement is always the toughest thing at the end of the day is how do we go about enforcing any of these things, especially in a day and age when the lawsuits are going to be out there. Businesses may not be completely above board in whether or not they're letting people go. There, there's there, and, and in a time when we're struggling in a job market to fill open positions, even though there are plenty of people that aren't working, enforcement may be tough. Typically the way this would work is you would get companies to say, we're going to say in writing, we definitely are adhering to this requirement. Then what? Then how do you enforce it at that point? I think from the government's perspective, they're hopeful that companies will simply comply. <sighs> we'll see. We shall see. I have a small business. We don't have 100 employees. I'd love to be in this position where we were like, oh, my God. But it's a fair question to ask. And I was like, eh. and I've said this over and over. It is not a mandate, but the pressure is put on. Who's paying for this? Am I paying for this? Is the employee paying for it? Is is the government paying for testing and all of these things? Who's paying for a lot of these things? How does that work? I mean, like everything, we come out with this, you know, like with, remember what, a month ago, Kamala Harris is to come out with this, these, these five pillars when it comes to immigration, of which uh, none of them will ever see the light of day. But it was just great for her to be out there is the way that they looked at it. Same thing here. Last week, he's got his six pillars to defeating this thing. But much of this stuff isn't really thought all the way through. And what's going to be written is going to be written strictly to withstand challenges in the courts more than anything else. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. All that being said, because of this, it has changed the landscape politically of a lot of things. And one of those things is California. The recall. Tomorrow, it's over, it's done, it's dusted. What is it going to look like? That's a fair question. Does he keep his gig? At first, this recall seemed like a sideshow. Indeed, there are 46 candidates vying for Newsom's job, including one who has been campaigning alongside a real, live Kodiak bear. But over the summer, the threat seemed real because that's what the polls showed. And so the Democrats have been spending big on ads and calling in the cavalry. Yeah, doing everything they can. Everybody goes back to Gray Davis and Schwarzenegger. Larry Elder's uh, positions he's taking are extremely conservative on the right and um, unlikely to, you know, have the kind of broad-based appeal that that Schwarzenegger did. Yeah, but Schwarzenegger had huge name recognition. They call him right to the right, Larry. Larry's right to the right, but Larry says... I'm going to be a uniter when I become governor. I'm going to use my bully pulpit to unite us. Because we have far more in common than we have apart. That doesn't sound like somebody who's angry and crazy. No, no. But it's easy to take pot shots at Larry. Absolutely. How close is it going to get? That's the big thing. That is the big thing. How close is this thing truly, truly going to get? One of the things is, if you, California, but just go across the country. 
we have this kind of weird world now where we divide things up based on your race is how you should vote. And Latinos in California, they're not thrilled by Newsom. They make it seem like the only issue we care about is immigration, when that is completely false. We care about putting food on the table. We care about having jobs. We care about being able to provide for our families, being able to go to a church that's open and not shut down. I didn't see Governor Newsom down here last year when businesses were were hurt badly. Everything that our values as Americans who happen to be Hispanics revolve around the Hispanic value, which is being conservative, voting faith, family, God, that is the core value. We're against the hypocrisy of Newsom. Yeah. And by the way, you know, they've talked about this in places where you're seeing the changing of the demographics, especially in border states and Texas. They've talked about, well, you know, the Latinos are going to get here as they continue to grow and stuff. And this is going to change so much of it. I don't think people realize my grandfather passed away last year, born and raised in Mexico. Right. Called me Shad till the day he died. Was. Uber conservative. Like you could not believe uber conservative my uncle who's also my business partner my best friend uber conservative younger he's not yet 50 a lot of his i think a lot of people think that they're just automatically because all they do is care about that they care about that and they're looked upon as 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 this 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 group that's a victim and the left has been very guilty of that because that's what the left enjoys doing right Both sides have their crew and group that they go to and they try to talk about, you know, the victimization. They make people big. But this this is a voter block that is growing and they're pissed. They're angry, especially at Newsom. If you look at everybody in the left wing media, it's got to its immigration. If you look at how they how they promote uh, Governor Newsom, we said how he helped the Latino community. Well, he gave illegal aliens forty. Uh, he gave illegal aliens stimulus money last year, and I said, how is that helping the Latino community? That's just helping illegal aliens who came over illegally. The Latino community is right behind you, being hurt with their businesses shut down. Right? You opened the strip bars and you kept Walmart and you kept Target open, but the Latino businesses that were closed and those people that were out of work, they were hurting. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because you're Latino and you're only supposed to vote one way. We'll talk more about this on the other side. There's a lot to get to and unpack here. But you're seeing the world in a in a, in a way where you're finding that more and more people, and I'm not talking about the extremes. I'm talking about more and more people are stepping up and saying, you know what? You like me because of my vote. You you use my, my color or my status in a way where what I believe, who I love, what I identify as, as the reason I should vote for you. Based solely on that one thing. And for the Latino community, it's all about immigration. And I have news for you. A lot of people in the Latino community are not thrilled by illegal immigration. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. My pillow's got Giza dream sheets. Oh, my God. They're so dreamy. Chad. Long staple cotton grown in a small area in the Mediterranean, between the Mediterranean, the Nile, and Sahara Desert. It is super silky, sateen, if you will, breathable and cool. You will absolutely love this. Normally, it costs about 100 bucks. Now, you get it for less than 50, 16 money back guarantee, different colors, different sizes. You will love these. They've also got the My Slippers. Took them a couple years to put the My Slippers together. When the My Slippers got put together, it's for indoor and outdoor, but they have special gel in the sole, along with a patented My Pillow fill. You will love these things. Take advantage of this and all the other deep discounts across everything MyPillow has to offer by going to MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Save big right now. Keys to Dream Sheets and everything else. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. I am proud to be governor of the most diverse state in the world's most diverse democracy, California Strong. We have to send a loud and powerful message. No on this recall. Kevin Newsom there. 
But Gavin, you got everybody on your side, right? No, you don't. People are frustrated. People are angry. We talked to Jim Kennedy, Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research last week, and what did he say? Especially when it comes to men. The ladies would keep him in power. If it was up to men, he's getting tossed out on his ass. And we'll see what it finally looks like. But the Latinos are speaking out, and they're not happy with him. They're not happy with the Democrats across the board in a lot of ways. Oh, I'm brown. Oh, I'm Latino. I have to vote Democrat. No, you don't have to. But there's a lot of Latinos who own small businesses, especially here in Los Angeles. And they're impacted a lot. A lot of people had to shut their businesses down. They lost money, so they had to close it down. They lost customers. Like Hispanics, we're known to be very like hardworking people. We take pride in what we do. And so when he shut down our businesses, that's their lifeline. Homeless camps everywhere, freeways. Uh, you name it. It's just, oh, yeah. um, it's just unbearable. It's getting worse every day. Yeah, yeah. It's nasty. It's disgusting. It's gross. I grew up in California my, most of my entire life. There was a decade where I was in Europe, uh, once a great while I was back in L.A., but it was, it was so nasty. Over that decade I was gone, I started to see a change. The subsequent 15, 20 years, it has just grown to a point where it, certain parts of it is unlivable. It's vile. And the Democrats just sit there and laugh. And you can't blame the Republicans on this one, kids. Because there ain't anybody else running that state. Oh, I hope Gavin Newsom goes away and never comes back. That would be so <laughs> nice. I'm a lifelong Californite. I've, I've lived here my entire life, and things have never been this bad. Homelessness, joblessness, the schools, the graffiti. Another thing people don't really talk about with California, it's dirty. There's trash everywhere. There's, there's homeless tents everywhere. It's really tough just to travel and see what it's become. Yeah, it's gross. Man, I tell you what, I've gone places in there, and all you smell of it's just, it's just, I was in San Francisco two summers ago. We were there doing meetings, a bunch of other stuff. It smelled like piss everywhere. It's all just smelled like urine, just rotting, nasting, feces and urine everywhere. And I'm like, how much are we paying for this hotel? This is awful, 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 awful. Keep voting. And this goes for everybody. If you're unhappy with what you got in there, but you continue to put it in there, that is a you fault. Man, woman, non-binary, but you think their politics jives with your politics because of one simple issue, not looking at the bigger picture, and then you wonder why everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Maybe you take a step back and go, am I doing something wrong here? Yes, we get the government we deserve. doesn't matter if it's California, New York, Iowa, Florida, Texas. We get what we deserve. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I never lie to you. We right. cannot require someone to be vaccinated. You know, I don't think we've ever had a, a situation where you mandated for the general population. The right of women to make decisions about their own bodies is not negotiable. No, definitely not. You don't want to mandate and try and force anyone to take the vaccine. We've never done that. Our interest is Americans' privacy and rights should be protected. It is a matter of privacy to know who is or who isn't. We don't want to be mandating from the federal government to the general population. It would be unenforceable and not appropriate. Putting the needs of unvaccinated people ahead of the needs of vaccinated people. One that's not the role of the federal government. No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it be mandatory. We must increase vaccinations among the unvaccinated with new vaccination requirements. Mandating a vaccine, I don't see it on a national level, merely because of encroaching upon a person's freedom to make their own choice of their own health. Rise up! Rise up! The battle is beginning, and you know this, and I know this, and we've had it going on for, oh, realistically in earnest for 
remember at first we, you know, you, you had Fauci out there going, I don't think you should have to wear a mask. I don't think they should have to. It's not going to affect us. I don't think you should have to do this. And I don't think you should have. There's nothing about this that is going to affect us. Uh, there's no such thing as, as gain of function. I was never a part of that except for the part where I was a part of it as more and more stuff comes out. I, you, but no, 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 no. <laughs> Chad. Yes. So the battle is here. It's not going anywhere. This is what's going to happen. A lot of stuff coming. First and foremost, you have to look at what kind of mandates they're looking at. They're not mandates in the way that I think we think of or else, right? Partially because we don't know what it's going to look like after the courts get done with it. Secondly, and remember what he said last week. The Department of Labor is developing an emergency rule to require all employers with 100 or more employees that together employ over 80 million workers to ensure their workforces are fully vaccinated or show a negative test at least once a week. Some of the biggest companies are already requiring this. United Airlines, Disney, Tyson's Food, and even Fox News. The bottom line. We're going to protect vaccinated workers from unvaccinated co-workers. So that's what it is. And I keep going back. So if you've gotten the shot, again, it's not a vaccine like we would think, right? Vaccine, polio. Whoa, look, I got a vaccine. I'm, uh, uh, and you're thinking, I don't have to take the shot the rest of this year, uh, next year, and the year on, and maybe never again. And I'm not going to get polio. And then we've almost eradicated. If, 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 if That's what we think of vaccine. This is kind of like a flu shot. We call it the vaccine. But it's not really vaccine the way that we think of vaccines. The, the flu shot will give you anywhere between, depending on the year, right, in between about 30 and 60% protection, probably on average, though, 50% protection. Let's just say that, 45, 50% protection. But what it does do is it really limits the damage that the flu can cause to you, but it's still dangerous for people who've got comorbidities and everything like that. And that's kind of what this is. This isn't the vaccine the way that we would think of a polio vaccine. People are angry about it. Not a shocker. People are upset about it. Again, not a shocker. And it is a situation where you're going to hear more and more things like this. We need to start looking at the choice to remain unvaccinated the same as we look at driving while intoxicated that you have the option to not get vaccinated if you want, but then you can't go out in public because when you go out in public, you have the potential of infecting other people with a potentially deadly disease. Just like you can choose to drink in private if you want, but if you get behind the wheel of a car and can endanger other people, there is an obligation by society to prevent you from doing that. The vaccinated should not have to pay the price. But you're vaccinated. 98% of the people in hospitals, 98% of the people that are dying. I was looking today when they were starting to break things down, the numbers, I think since July, 92% of the people that have died. Or it's 96. I mean, because there was like several different numbers. uh, Unvaccinated. So why, if you're vaccinated, should... Somebody who's unvaccinated, stay in. I'm curious. So you're vaccinated. Chances of you getting this thing and dying are slim to none. Unless you're really sick already. And you could catch a cold and it would be over for you. But the unvaccinated need to stay in. Listen to what she says there. I'm going to go over this again. I, I find it. Listen to what she says. We need to start looking at the choice to remain unvaccinated the same as we look at driving while intoxicated. That you have the option to not get vaccinated if you want, but then you can't go out in public because. You can't go out in public. Wow. Wow. That's insane. That is. Then you get more and more of this. It's getting uglier and uglier. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. 
Are you anti-vaxxer? Hell no. First of all, it's a shot. It's not a vaccine. It's not a vaccine the way we think of it. Secondly, I've already got mine. I got Moderna, top shelf, of course. And that was the only thing they offered. I've had it and I've got Moderna. So I am pro shot 100%. I think it's as far as we can see, it's safe. By the way, mRNA has been around. They've been studying this thing for a long time. Johnson & Johnson, DNA has been around forever and a day. So it's like, oh, you don't know what's going to happen to you. Uh, okay, I get it. I understand that. And for kids, I think there's a, a to me, I'm far more cautious because as an adult, I can make a decision for myself. But I'm far more, I'm fully about getting the shot. I'm also fully about freedoms and choice. I am more pro-freedom than I am pro-shot. But I'm pro both of them. But responsibility, we need to have more of it when it comes to the way that we treat each other. And you've got to learn to treat this thing with respect, but you can't live in fear. And when I hear, oh, the unvaccinated should just stay inside, I think to myself, what the hell are you talking about, lady? The unwashed? Talk about making something political. I think the um, downside of this mandate in terms of hardening positions and taking something that was subtly political and making it overtly political could outweigh any of the benefits that we hope to achieve. If you look at where we are right now, right now 75% of adults over the age of 18 have had at least one dose of the vaccine. Most of them will complete the series. That's a very high number of people vaccinated. We're not going to get above 90%. We don't even really reach 90% with childhood immunizations, which are mandated. So we're going to get somewhere between 80 and 90%. Perhaps with a mandate on small businesses, eventually you get to something akin to 85 percent but it's going to be slow because this is going to get litigated it takes osha time to implement regulations you'll have to put in place guidance give businesses a grace period and then figure out what the enforcement mechanism is going to be yeah dr gottlieb there absolutely i agree 110 percent it is going to take a while for us to get there what does it actually look like how is it enforced and that enforcement mechanism isn't going to be perfect And a lot of lip service is going to pay to businesses, and businesses are going to be asking simple questions. Simple questions like, who's paying for this? Who's paying for people to go out and get tested all the time? Do I have to pay for it? Do I pass it on the employees? I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to go on when it comes to this besides the, the, the litigation side. People are going to have serious questions about the cost, who's paying for it, what kind of test do they have to have, Do they have to get the boosters as well? What if they've caught it? They've had it, and they test positive for the antibodies. That's one thing I've not heard anything about. And by the way, the more you read into it, and we've talked about this, the more that you look into human natural antibodies, if you will, and the other being the shot, you start going, oh, well, by the way, if you've had both, they talk about you being full, fully, like, bulletproof. I don't know about that, but I've had both. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program over the weekend, 9-11. People were celebrating, commemorating, celebrating us coming together on 9-12. They were commemorating the day as well new documents are coming out about what took place who knew what what was the saudis involvement in any of this the newly released documents following an executive order from president biden detail how a saudi diplomat living in los angeles assisted two of the hijackers once they arrived in the u.s described at the time as two very significant people and according to the fbi's report Another Saudi government employee spent the night in a hotel with another man connected to one of Osama bin Laden's top lieutenants. Yeah. Yeah. There's tons of lawsuits out there. More and more is being released. Scrutinize the Saudis. What did they know? What didn't they know? There is going to be tons of lawsuits. I, you know, there's going to be, look, they're, they're going to talk about, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. This is attorney Jim uh, Krindler talking about these documents. For 20 years, the Saudi government has relied upon the United States government to bury the facts and protect them and hide their culpability from the world. 
Yeah. Well, that's not happening now. And the question is, and I think it's a fair question, what did people know? What did they know? Who knew what? How much did they know? How much were they involved? And if you don't think there can't be settlements and, and, and billions and billions of dollars to families, you'd be lying to yourself. Let's not forget Libya, Gaddafi, Pan Am, Flight 103, Lockerbie, they settled with the families. Took a long time. But another situation where the Saudis are caught, people ask, why do we do business with them? It's it's a region we do business with. And it's not a region that we agree pretty much with anything that goes on there. And they don't agree with us. But unfortunately, we have to do business. And many times it's because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Still my enemy, but less of an enemy than they are. See Iran. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from you. Rough Greens makes all pet food better, but my dogs are happier and healthier than they have been. My puppies are bouncy and happy. They show no signs of anything other than being a giant, huge, crazy puppies, even though they're about two pounds. They're so tiny. On the other side, my dog Doodle, a little bit older, long in the tooth, not as puppy as, as he used to be, I'm sure, when he was a puppy, but he's happy and he's healthy. His fur is better. His hips are better. His joint pain is virtually gone. He's just a happier, healthier dog. Guess what? All because of K9 Vitasmart. Sprinkle on top of his food brings his food to life. If you've had trouble with your dogs with joint pain, if you had trouble with your dogs with maybe allergies or, or really anything, try this supplement. Sprinkle on top of your dog's food. They'll love it. Vitamins, vegetables, minerals, probiotics, everything you can think of is in this thing, and it will change the way your dog lives their life. Try it now for free. RUFFgreens.com slash Chad. You go there. Sign up for it in the sense that they're going to send you a bag. That's it. They're not going to ask you for anything but to pay for shipping. That's it. You're going to get the bag for free. Cover the cost of shipping. Get the bag for free. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. Call 833-MY-DOG-77. Roughgreens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. Freedom of speech is under attack in Texas. There is a dangerous movement by some social media companies to silence conservative ideas and values. Today, I'm about to sign a law that fights back against big tech political censorship. It prevents social media companies from banning users based upon the user's political viewpoints. It allows Texans who are wrongfully deplatformed or restricted to be able to file a lawsuit to get back onto that social media site. It also allows the Texas Attorney General to file suit on behalf of anybody who was wrongfully restricted from access to that social media site. In Texas, we will always fight for your freedom of speech. Governor Abbott, you will fight for freedom of choice, but you fight for freedom of speech. Welcome to the world of, of lunacy. You know, over the weekend I saw this thing, and we're going to touch on a little bit more here in a little bit, but of uh, they were talking about people who may be conservative in Hollywood. And by the way, just to let you guys know, there are far more conservative, libertarian-like thinkers that I think people realize. Yes, it's still it's still eighty twenty, but I think that Hollywood might you know might like you to think it's ninety nine percent versus one percent, and it's not. And it might it's probably closer to seventy thirty. But the internet, which is we continue to say, which is not real life. See, the Internet's not real life. And I don't even, like, the Internet's real. Social media is not real. 
Somebody's angry. Social media. What? Somebody's angry? So they've got this new law now to protect. If you've been kicked off a social media site because you voiced an opinion, and that opinion has been deemed to be bad by the powers that be, then they're going to say to you, hey, we're kicking you off. And then Texas and say, well, we're going to sue you for kicking that person off for having a differing of opinion. And I think we all know there's a difference between a differing of opinion. Like, I see something this way, you see it another way. Than people who were just awful. Unfortunately, differing of opinion now has become the awful thing. And that is not good for any of us. It's what hurts conversation, and we need to be able to have conversation. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Touch on that. NFL's back. Ah, Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thought. This is Chad Benson. The federal government is on safe ground when it comes to mandating that government workers get vaccinated or hospital workers because anyone who's getting federal funds, they've got more control over. But it's the mandate of the larger companies where I think that there could be serious challenges here. Yeah. Dan Abrams right there, of course, uh, works on court TV and legal expert and We'll fondly remember him always as the host of Live PD, which will hopefully be coming back once you get past the insanity of the world of which we live, because it is entertaining. And we get a real look at police in the police world. But it, come on. So the businesses are going to fight. The governors are going to fight. We all know that. Requirement. That's the big thing. It's the words requirement. So the way it would work, you got over 100 people working for you. They either have to be vaccinated or they have to take a test once a week. We don't know who pays for it, what test is 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 going to be acceptable. And on top of that, this is really, what about the thing that's not being asked? What about natural immunity? You've caught it, right? So you've got it. Now what? You've had it. You've got natural immunity. By the way, let's just say you caught it two weeks ago. I think they say it's up to three months before they recommend you getting a shot. I'm sure those things will change depending on how the politics goes. How does any of this even work when it comes to enforcement? Because enforcement is always going to be one of the toughest things to do. Because as we all know. People are like, oh, yeah, totally. We got this. We're going to take care of this. I got this. Yeah, let me sign. You want me to sign this right here? Yeah. Yeah, let me sign this. says that I'm doing everything you've asked me to do. Are you really? No, nah, not really. I'm not going to really do that. I'm not going to fire a bunch of people. I'm not going to do any of that, especially in the time. And I think a lot of this has to do with, with, with how your business is going. If you're having trouble filling jobs, if you're having trouble filling positions already, to put yourself in a position where you could lose a, a third of your staff, potentially? Do you really want to do that? Probably not. Here's the other thing. The micro versus macro snapshot. These are people, eventually, we're going to come out of this fog of stupidity. Where we're not fighting. We treat this thing as it is, which is endemic, and it's not going anywhere. We, we, we learn to live with this thing, through this thing, around this thing. The more we're exposed, the more we get people the shot, the, the, the more that things you know tend to be uh, back to normal, the better it's going to be for everybody. 
if you go and piss off a good portion of people who work in your industry and vice versa, they, they you know, you get pissed off by them. The world's a small place. You, you don't want to do that. You don't. And I keep going back to everybody keeps telling me, oh, those people. Mm, look, do I think 70 percent of the people who say that they're not going to get a shot? So there's out of 100 percent. So let's say it's 20 percent, 30 percent of people say they're never giving a shot. Depends on what poll you're looking at. Do I think realistically that 20 out of those 30 that work for a company are going to walk away from their gig? I don't know. In this day and age, it might be a lot easier. Of course, because of what the industry in itself looks like. And then it comes the enforcement side. goes back to this. The enforcement side. And the enforcement side of anything is the thing that will really be the most telling. How do you enforce any of these things? State by state, again, goes back to what if you've had it, test positive for the antibodies. We can go on and on and on. What kind of fines do they really look like? What happens when you, I mean, all of these things that are going to go on and on. What happens when a company says, yeah, we're all about this, and then they ignore it? Typically, the way this would work is you would get companies to say, we're going to say in writing, we definitely are adhering to this requirement. Then what? Then how do you enforce it at that point? I think from the government's perspective, they're hopeful that companies will simply comply. They're hoping. But as we know, lip service. Lip service. It's going to be everywhere when it comes to this. So how should we live? We should live like this thing's kind of like the flu. It's endemic, not pandemic. We're, we're trying to vaccinate ourselves out of something that we're not going to be able to vaccinate, vaccinate ourselves out of. It's just not going to happen the way that people want. Not in a period of time that it's going to leave much on the other side for human beings when they go, wow, look at the economy. Look at life. We try to cure something in the middle of something. And in doing so, we made things 10 times worse. Can't do it the way that people think. You go, look, more of the epidemiologists are coming out more and more. Experts are coming out saying, look, the best thing that we can do is start to live a normal life, be cautious, be respectful, protect the ones who truly need it, and the rest of us start to get on with our lives in a normal way. That's the beauty of yesterday, watching football. We're going to talk about football in a little bit, but it was so amazing to see all of the fans there. Saturday, watching the big house at night, right? You got Washington and you got Michigan. And there's 105, 110,000 people in Michigan, in Ann Arbor. And it was great watching that. You go over and you look at Ohio State and Oregon during the day. Incredible. 100 plus thousand people, new record. It was 104,700 and something. Just awesome to watch. Oh, it's a super spreader event. You give people options, you give people choices. You do what's best for you first and foremost. Stop worrying about your neighbor. Unless your neighbor's coming over with a gun, stop. Well, they could because they could have it. Yes, but the vaccine is is your protection against it. The shot is your protection. Wearing a mask is your protection. That's all that you can do. That's it. And if you want to get a shot and a shot and wear five masks, you can do that. Super protected. It's great. It's frustrating, though. That's where we are. We're, we're, we're a nation, uh, I think the 70% of us, who, who are not what I call in the middle, we're, we're a little bit right or a little bit left, but we're not, we're not the politics and the issue that drives us apart. We're just the frustrated majority and exhausted of that frustration. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. One of the reasons is because is we want to have normal conversations, can't. Texas, of course, in the midst of doing all kinds of things. So six weeks now for abortion, uh, stricter voting laws in Texas, some of which I think are ridiculous, some of which I've got no problem with. 
but welcome to the world we live in. One of the things they're trying to do is take on social media, which, as we all know, a tough thing to do. Freedom of speech is under attack in Texas. There is a dangerous movement by some social media companies to silence conservative ideas and value. Today, I'm about to sign a law that fights back against big tech political censorship. It prevents social media companies from banning users based upon the user's political viewpoints. Now, if you're trolling an awful human being, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you're threatening somebody's life and things of that nature, I have no problem with with them telling you to heave up. I got zero problems. Uh, do I have a problem with them being a private business? Here's the thing. You've become the town square. And because you become the town square, you have a monopoly on things. And because of that monopoly and the town square, in a way, there are certain issues here that have, you know, taken you from being that little private business to to more than just that. Social media is a true issue in this country. It is. And it's an issue that is is getting uglier and uglier and uglier. It really is. So, New York University report out today. Social media companies didn't cause the political divide, but it definitely widened it, pushed it towards violence. Congress and the Biden administration are moving from blame apportioning to choosing penalties and remedies for these platforms. Some of the things they're saying you guys need to do is, first of all, get rid of likes and shares, counts, stop rewarding polarization. It is a mechanism for mis- and disinformation that fuels political polarization, but it's also a mechanism of punishment. If somebody goes out there and says a man is a man and a woman is a woman, and you say it online, you could get punished for it. That is your belief. Yes, it is. They would say. And they said, so because of that, we're going to ban you. Well, I don't think that's... Why is that? Because I have a different belief? Why aren't you banning, banning that person? That says, no, you can be anything you want to be. If you want to be... You know, g- you know, gender fluid. If today you want to be a man, tomorrow you want to be a woman, and the day before, the day after that, you want to be non-binary, and all of that is scientific. It's not, but all of it is, is totally fine. Well, that's, no. That's not, why are you getting rid of, that's what a lot of people have issues with. Very rarely do you hear, and by the way, the right dominates in a lot of places. They use social media in such a good way, but the left is great at the punishment side of it. We should be able to have conversations. You shouldn't fear that you're going to get in trouble. You shouldn't fear of having, and by the way, to me, I find it just as offensive in this day and age of of saying that you're going to fire somebody over a differing of political opinions. We're going to get deeper into this tomorrow because I've got some neat stories. Obviously, you guys know what I do outside of here with my voiceovers and stuff and how some people will and won't work with somebody like me, which is insane. But welcome to the world of wackiness. Can't having a differing of opinion. You're telling somebody, hey, your opinion is so horrible to me that I can't work with you. And I would just sit there and shake my head. I There's nobody out there. And we're talking about political opinions, right? Like pro-choice, pro-life, uh, Republican, Democrat. We're not talking about, you know, Nazis or, or, or insane. We're talking about just people of differing opinions about stuff. Or maybe the opinion they have may even mirror some of it of what other people believe. But it's not in goose step with them. And because of that, you're automatically a bad person. That's a scary thing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. All right. Talk a little NFL. <sighs> Big winners and losers this weekend. We got one more game tonight. What? what? Chad Benson Show. The 
Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. Ten oh six yesterday morning, my time. One oh six, producer Phil's time, as he does every year at that time. I think it's seven eight years running. I get a text message from him, reading these words. Well, there's always next year. The NFL's back, baby. Loved it. Enjoyed every second of it this weekend. A few weekends where, I mean, the last past year or so, obviously we did a lot of churching from home, but where I didn't go to church, wife just looks at me and goes, oh, you know, whatever. I get it. I stayed at home, and I did nothing. I watched football all day Saturday. Loved it. College football was great. I mean, you know, the morning games were awesome. Oregon going into Ohio State and and laying down the gauntlet for the Pac-28. I don't know how many teams are in it now. Conferences know how to count. That's not a good thing when it comes to your kids going to college there. But that was awesome. And seeing the crowds and the whole nine yards. And then yesterday, it was awesome. Started great games in the morning. I watched the youngsters play, right? So you got, you know, you got, you, you got Trevor Lawrence, and it was just, it was amazing. Uh, there was great games that just everywhere. Just a lot of fun. And then the afternoon games were insane. Kansas City, 80. It's the only place I think you could say in the NFL that is similar to a college stadium. It was that crazy. It was that loony. And then, uh, after a great game there, you go and you, you, you know, you watch a little bit of flipping back and forth between the Saints' home game, which was in Jacksonville. This is how they picked Jacksonville. So, obviously, Ida rolled through. There's still issues in Louisiana. And New Orleans, the Superdome, while there was no damage, there is no electricity. We're moving somewhere. We're, we're going to move it to Jacksonville. Why did they pick Jacksonville? They're closer places. They wanted to find the most expensive ticket and the furthest away for Green Bay Packer fans. And they chose Jacksonville. And there was probably 40,000 people there. And 30,000, 35,000 were Packer fans. And they got whooped up on. And that was great. And then the nightcap. That's SoFi Stadium, guys. If you've not seen that, Kroenke has built a stadium that, you know, for years it was Jarrah's house, right? So it was Jarrah's house. Cowboy Stadium is, is the stadium. It's art. It is athleticism. It is everything. Then you go to SoFi, and it is a community. It is a small village. It's a city. It was just insane. But seeing the fans, hearing the fans, it was awesome. And I loved it. Loved every second of it. Some winners and losers. I, I, what do you say about Aaron Rodgers, who just really, I don't even know if he wants to, I don't know if he wants to play football anymore. I think that's a fair thing, but I got to be honest. I, he just did not seem to care, and that's, I mean, that's kind of him, right, you know? Watching the young guys play, which is great. Guys on new teams, which was awesome. It's just fun. I loved it, and it felt real. It felt real, and that's what we needed. Top of that, over the weekend, you had another pretty decent weekend at the box office, another situation where we're turning back to some normal feelings and some normal numbers when it comes to people getting out eating going to movies concerts Is this what you wanted? they'll take it marvel shang chi and the legend of the ten rings repeats in the box office top spot in week two of release earning another 35.8 million dollars that puts its total domestic take at 145.6 million so far making it the fourth highest grossing film of the year with time remaining to claim the top spot from black widow i'm seeing winners a third place bow for the horror flick malignant the only other film opening in wide release over the weekend about 5.6 million there Yep, but it was also on HBO. Creepy movie, by the way, if you like creepy movies. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. 
Solid fun show. We got you through the Monday. Obviously, Tuesday is coming, unless something weird happens and Wednesday shows up early, but I don't think that's going to happen. You guys have a blessed rest of your day. We'll do it again tomorrow. As always, night-night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.